last paper and Alex. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I must uh, 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 say that, uh, you know, you, you have a lot of staying power, you know, after, uh, you know, the, to, to go through uh, those, you know, those many papers. And I will try, maybe in view of the fact that, uh, uh, you know, I'm the last speaker and uh, it was a, a sort of a, a, a little bit packed with many ideas. Uh, so I'll try to be, uh, let's say, less formal than uh, I usually am and try to uh, say uh, uh, some of the things, first of all, intuitively and go through the main results and only then, you know, maybe use a little bit of the, uh, 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 you know, of the uh, uh, time to, uh, uh, to show you some of the, uh, uh, some, some of the analytics. Now, uh, uh, what this paper is trying to do uh, is uh, uh, basically to uh, build a b bridge between the three kinds of uh, literature. <coughs> uh, there is a, a literature uh, on the uh, interaction between fiscal and monetary policy uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, sprung out uh, recently there are some papers by Dixit and Lambertini and so on. Now, this literature uh, considers uh, frameworks uh, uh, in which uh, uh, the labor market is competitive. <coughs> uh, now, there is uh, another literature uh, that uh, uh, considers uh, uh, the interaction between, uh, 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 between monetary policy uh, and between uh, uh, fiscal policy uh, excuse me, between monetary policy and labor unions uh, uh, in a framework in which uh, 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 in, in which uh, uh, let me start again uh, there is this literature that uh, looks at interaction this is particularly relevant uh, for uh, European countries in which uh, the degree of unionization uh, is quite high and uh, the degree of coverage that is the, 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 the amount of uh, labor contracts, uh, the fraction of labor contracts that is actually covered uh, by uh, uh, union agreements uh, is substantially higher uh, than uh, the actual uh, 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 union membership and it's usually of the order of magnitude of 80%. So if you want to understand uh, you know, wage formation in uh, uh, Europe, uh, then uh, you really uh, have to take into consideration the central role that is played uh, by unions. Uh, this is, uh, you know, very different uh, from the U.S., in which uh, the degree of unionization uh, is much smaller. It's probably today uh, around 10 percent, and uh, you know, and the extension through coverage is also substantially smaller. So there is this literature that has developed during the last 10 years or, or so uh, that uh, tries to look at. Uh, the interactions uh, between uh, monetary policy and between labor unions and uh, the basic uh, mechanism there uh, is that uh, uh, when you have, uh, you know, when uh, wage setting is concentrated in a small number of unions, uh, then uh, uh, those unions, uh, if they are first movers in the, in the you know, in the uh, game theoretic sense, uh, they. Uh, 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 they take into consideration when they set the nominal wages. This is a framework in which firms, I think realistically, are assumed to set nominal wages. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, then uh, they take into consideration what is going to be the response of uh, uh, the monetary authority that uh, uh, then chooses uh, its uh, uh, monetary policy instrument, whatever it happens to be, either the money supply or the interest rate, uh, one could formulate it either, you know, either way uh, because of the existence of a stable demand uh, for money. And uh, uh, so the union takes into, uh, the, or the unions take into consideration what the response of the monetary uh, uh, authority is going to be and therefore what is going to be the rate of inflation. And in particular, it takes into consideration uh, the uh, the fact that uh, if it, just to illustrate, they take the case of one union, okay, one uh, uh, you know large uh, 
all-encompassing uh, labor union, so it knows that uh, if, if it faces a monetary authority that is, in today's jargon, a flexible inflation target, uh, that is a, 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 you know, a, a, an entity that uh, cares both about the rate of unemployment and about the rate of inflation, uh, then uh, this entity is going to respond uh, to an increase in uh, uh, nominal wages, which also increases the real wage, by uh, uh, expansionary monetary policy in order to, uh, uh, in order to uh, offset to some extent uh, the, uh, the effects on uh, uh, unemployment. Uh, but also, uh, you know, but then it may, but then the monetary authority also dislikes inflation, so it may also, ex uh, uh, it may also respond by uh, uh, alternatively uh, with a focus mostly on preventing the inflationary consequences of an increase in wages. And uh, 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 which one is going to be that is, you know, so basically you have two forces here. And which one it's going to be depends basically on the conservativeness of the central bank. Okay? If the central bank is very conservative, uh, then uh, uh, it will, uh, it will uh, respond, uh, it will care. Let's take the extreme case in which it cares only about inflation. Uh, then uh, when there is an increase in wages, uh, it is going to uh, respond uh, basically by uh, a contractionary monetary policy. And uh, yeah, as, a con as a consequence, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, the rate of unemployment uh, is going to increase. Now, the, this, this has a, 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 moderating, a moderating effect on the, uh, on the wage demands of unions uh, because of the fact that they, they dislike unemployment. And one of the things that enters into their objective function is, uh, is the rate of unemployment among, among union members. Uh, now, but there is also another possibility, and that is uh, that the central bank, let's say, is relatively liberal, uh, so that uh, it cares mostly about uh, uh, the impact on unemployment, uh, in which case, uh, <coughs> uh, when the union raises its nominal wage, creating an increase in real wages, and therefore, uh, through the derived demand for labor and all that, uh, creating a situation uh, where uh, 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 the, the, there is an increase in unemployment, then it's going to induce the, uh, induce the central bank uh, to react by, uh, um, uh, by uh, uh, um, actually uh, uh, expanding the money supply. And uh, 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 in that case, uh, the, you know, the mechanism that, uh, uh, you know, that I... Uh, uh, flash before, uh, you know, is not going you know, is not going to work. Okay, this is not a full description of all the possibilities here. There is a whole literature about that, and then it depends also whether there are, uh, uh, you know, whether unions are inflation averse and so on. But uh, actually, uh, you know, th this is just one component of what we have here, and uh, I just wanted to uh, give you an illustration of the, the, the kind of strategic interactions that, uh, 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 that uh, uh, um, occur uh, between unions uh, and between the, uh, and between the uh, monetary authority. The, uh, 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 coming back to the first case in which uh, the central bank is relatively conservative and uh, uh, it is concerned mostly uh, with uh, uh, inflation, uh, then uh, uh, the fact that uh, the union, at the time that it sets the nominal wage, knows that the central bank uh, is going to respond uh, by uh, 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 contracting the money supply, uh, actually deters it from uh, deters it to some extent from increasing, uh, you know, the nom from increasing the nominal wage. Uh, and uh, so there is uh, what we what uh, what we have called, for example in the paper with Francesco Lippi several years back, a strategic effect. So when I will use the term, uh, you know, strategic effect, uh, then uh, 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 this is what I am, uh, you know, referring to. Now, uh, there is a third, uh, uh, um, you know, a strand of literature uh, that uh, uh, looks uh, at uh, uh, the relationship between uh, taxes 
uh, and unemployment benefits on one hand, uh, and between uh, uh, and between economic macroeconomic performance on the other, particularly as far as the rate of unemployment as the, and also to some extent the rate of inflation is concerned, but mostly with respect with respect to the rate to the rate of unemployment, and uh, here. Uh, uh, for example, and, uh, you know, the, 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 there is some empirical literature on that. Uh, there is also some theoretical literature. I will mention maybe very quickly three papers. Uh, first of all, there is a paper by Alezina and uh, Perotti in 1997. Uh, that, uh, and, you know, and this literature, uh, this, this is a literature that is motivated by the European scene, so it is a... a, a you know, it, it is anchored on the idea that uh, there are labor unions. Uh, and uh, uh, so, you know, labor unions here, the, the fact that uh, is, is, is an essential element. And uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the um, uh, so there is a, uh, so what, for, uh, what are Zina and, Tabel and uh, uh, Perotti uh, uh, show is that uh, uh, and they, they, they look at the interaction basically between unionized labor markets and between uh, fiscal policy, where fiscal policy is characterized in terms of uh, uh, taxes on labor uh, and in terms of unemployment benefits. And they show that uh, when the fiscal authority raises taxes uh, and unemployment benefits, then uh, uh, the extent to which uh, uh, this uh, increase, let's say, in taxes is passed uh, uh, forward uh, to employer depends uh, on the decentralization of wage bargaining. Uh, <clears throat> and in particular, uh, the higher is the degree of centralization of wage bargaining, that is, uh, the higher is competitiveness, is, is the degree of, uh, uh, the, higher, the smaller is uh, uh, the level of competitiveness in the, in the labor market, uh, uh, the higher is going to be the forward shifting of taxes uh, into you know, onto employers, and therefore uh, the effect on competitiveness uh, is going to be uh, 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 you know is going to be worse. So you know that is a, a given increase, a given increase in taxes by the fiscal authority is going to have a, a stronger adverse effect on competitiveness. As a matter of fact, now I recall this article is actually called. Uh, something like uh, uh, labor unions and competitiveness, okay? So, you know, the, the focus is, uh, is on this. Uh, now, uh, there is a, 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 a paper that is related to that, an empirical paper by the variant Tabellini uh, that uh, 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 look at, uh, uh, you know, at uh, basically implement, try to test across uh, a sample of uh, uh, different European countries uh, uh, whether, uh, 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 this, uh, uh, w whether the macroeconomic performance as measured, for example, by the rate of unemployment uh, is uh, uh, worse in countries which have uh, higher tax rates uh, on labor and higher unemployment benefits. And, uh, uh, you know, the evidence is uh, quite strong in favor of the hypothesis. That's right, Guido, am I right in that? Yeah, quite strong evidence uh, showing that uh, uh, you know, when tax rates uh, uh, on labor they are higher and uh, when unemployment benefits are higher, then the rate of unemployment uh, you know, is higher. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, <clears throat> now, so what uh, uh, we are going to, uh, what we are doing then, we're sort of putting those, all those uh, uh, disparate elements uh, together. So, in other words, and uh, to do it uh, formally, uh, we actually uh, uh, oh, and I should mention, I forgot, uh, uh, there is a third paper, recent paper by uh, 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 Nickel, and uh, who was the Nyonzata? Uh, and somebody else, uh, an empirical paper that just appeared in the Economic Journal, uh, and, uh, you know, they show empirically uh, something similar to what to the result that the variant Bellini obtained, uh, but, uh, they, but they also show that uh, you know, that uh, the, degree, the degree of centralization of, uh, uh, labor bar of uh, wage bargaining also has, uh, uh, you know, an adverse impact uh, on that. The, those are, and they actually start uh, with a whole range of uh, hypotheses about 
what type of labor market policies, uh, type, uh, labor market variables are going to impact on, uh, econo on macroeconomic performance. And uh, they find uh, basically that the two most important factors out of five that they examine are uh, uh, taxes and unemployment benefits and uh, 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 the degree of centralization of wage bargaining. What is nice is that, uh, like also in the paper by the variant Abellini, you have a, uh, you know, there is, there is enough variation across uh, the European countries in the degree of centralization of wage bargaining and in taxes that you can capture some of the effects of those, uh, of those things. Okay, so uh, the model that uh, I'm going to, so this is a, you know, a theoretical exercise, and uh, basically uh, 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 we take a, a previous model of ours, uh, uh, joint with also Coricio Coricelli, so it's, I refer to that as CCD, Cucuma, uh, Coricelli, Cucum and Dalmazzo. Uh, that model didn't have fiscal policy. This is a, a, a relatively uh, you know, the problem, you know, there are many interactions here, and uh, so it is a little bit uh, complex to see those interactions, uh, but uh, the model is, uh, uh, given the interact, the different kind of interactions that you have here, the model is sufficiently simple uh, to be able to solve it uh, analytically and to see uh, some of the forces uh, at work. And so we took uh, this model with some modifications as a benchmark and introduce into that model, uh, you know, fiscal policy. Well, fiscal policy is characterized here uh, by two variables. It's char characterized by uh, the uh, uh, by the wedge, by the tax wedge between gross and uh, uh, gross and net uh, wages, uh, and you know the tax wedge is may be due in general to two things. It may be due to the fact that there is a, so a social security tax that is imposed on the employer. And uh, also to the, to the usual fact that there is also a labor tax. So, but you know, but uh, ultimately, what matters is the total wage. So, I'm going to talk directly in terms of the total wage, and uh, 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 then uh, 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 the, so we introduce a fiscal policy uh, through this uh, variable into into uh, that uh, kind of framework. Uh, this is a framework in which uh, there is, a, uh, the, you know, there is a number of labor unions denoted by N, and uh, uh, each one of uh, and the labor force uh, uh, that is employed by each one of those labor unions uh, is uh, attached to the particular firm. So, and the firms are uh, uh, basically monopolistically competitive firms uh, that. Uh, uh, set prices, so you know, so there are uh, you know there are price setters, uh, and uh, 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 unlike much of the new Keynesian literature, we assume uh, that uh, uh, most of the stickiness in nominal variables uh, resides uh, in wages and not in prices. That uh, you know, basically, the new Keynesian literature, uh, you know, focuses. Uh, on uh, uh, stickiness in uh, all nominal variables. And uh, we believe uh, that uh, uh, the difference in stickiness between wages and between prices is an important element in uh, uh, the transmission of monetary policy shocks into, into the economy. And in particular, the prices are substantially more flexible uh, than uh, wages. So in the model, we approximate that by assuming that prices are completely flexible and that wages are uh, com wages, nominal wages, I mean, okay, uh, are, completely, uh, you know, are completely sticky. Uh, and uh, there is actually evidence that supports that, uh, that, supports, that you know, supports the view that this is a, a, you know, a, 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 reasonable, a reasonable presumption. But uh, you know, I have no time to go to that. The paper describes some of this evidence, some work by two Belgians about the Belgian CPI that actually shows that uh, the, that more than 50 percent of prices, uh, you know, in the Belgian CPI, they did a very detailed study, are actually adjusted uh, within uh, uh, several months, whereas nominal wages are usually fixed for a period of uh, 
uh, more than a, a year, sometimes two years or so. So this seems to capture something. Now formally, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, we basically set up a game uh, in which, uh, uh, which has three stages, uh, and which is designed to capture this kind of uh, notions that I was uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, expounding. Uh, number one, uh, in, state, there is, in the first stage, stage number one, uh, there is a, a, you know, a, the, the unions, there are N unions. Uh, uh, each one of those N unions uh, sets uh, its nominal wage. Uh, taking the w wages that are set by the other unions as given, so they play Nash vis-a-vis uh, -vis each other, and anticipating down the road uh, what is going to be the response in the second stage of the monetary authority. The monetary authority in the second stage takes those nominal wages as given and sets the interest rate. Uh, uh, and then comes the third stage in which, uh, the, uh, 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 in which uh, a large number of uh, atomistic, monopolistically competitive firms, each one of which chooses uh, the, its profit maximizing price, taking as given the monetary policy uh, of the uh, monetary authority and uh, uh, the wages that have been preset uh, you know, in, the, in the previous period. So this is the game that uh, we are going to look at. Now, uh, uh, so, let me show, so let me show you the components of that, uh, because uh, you know, I, I think I need to, to introduce a little bit of the structure. Uh, okay, so you know, the, the components are really very simple. Okay, uh, you know, why I, uh, the index I uh, refers to, uh, refers to the, in, to the union, there are N unions, and uh, there is a quantity, the fixed quantity of labor, L naught, that of workers that is attached to, you know, to, to each firm. And all the unions that are in this interval, you know, they are, uh, all, uh, all the um, monopolistic competitive firms reside on the unit interval, which you ca can be divided into, uh, uh, intervals of this type, I over n up to I plus 1 over n, uh, that uh, um, reflect uh, 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 you know, all the workers that are unionized, uh, that are unionized by union I. Um, uh, J is the index of the firm, I is the index of the, uh, uh, of the, um, uh, of the union, uh, and uh, uh, each, one, each one, each firm, this, uh, this is the product function of each firm. We then explain that this is labor, output. Uh, those are the differentiated products. And uh, uh, so uh, the demand function, you know, we don't start from utility. Our primitive is uh, uh, just the demand function. So this is the demand facing uh, firm, uh, uh, firm J, whose labor force is unionized by union I. Uh, it is a function of uh, the relative price that it sets. Uh, P is the general price index, PIJ is the price that is chosen by the firm, eta is this uh, exponent that is related, if there uh, uh, would be, you know, it's, it's basically related to the elasticity of substitution. And then uh, there is uh, this um, uh, M over P, which basically is a shift factor uh, uh, in demand that uh, affects all, uh, 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 you know, all demands uh, uh, in the same manner. And that is going to be effect and, and whose size is going to depend on monetary policy through the stock of nominal stock of money M and uh, uh, on the price level. Uh, uh, equation number three is a definition of the general price level. Everything here is transformed into logarithms, lowercase letters denote uh, uh, logarithms. Then there is a monetary institution, equation of uh, monetary, uh, excuse me, a, a monetary authority, a central bank whose loss function is given by equation number four. Uh, U is the rate of unemployment, pi is the rate of inflation, and I is the degree of central bank conservativeness. Then there is a demand for money function, uh, <coughs> uh, where K is uh, the Cambridge K, uh, Y is, uh, to, to the delta is, uh, uh, the, represents the transaction demand for money, the usual kind of thing, and then uh, 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 the demand for money is also a negative function of uh, uh, of I. So this is a standard kind of thing. Uh, as far as things go here, let me just uh, point out uh, a, piece, a piece of notation. W here 
W that uh, look at the, you know, I flesh it out on the screen. W is the, is the net nominal wage, after tax net nominal wage. One minus, and T is, uh, T is actually the, uh, the wedge, the tax wedge, uh, but uh, in logarithmic form. And uh, here there is a transformation that uh, shows the relationship between this uh, uh, T in, uh, uh, between, uh, excuse me, T is not in, T is in level forms. It's not in, uh, okay, so, you know, there is kappa, kappa, which is the social security tax that is imposed on the gross wage of uh, employers. And then there is a new, uh, that is uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the income tax uh, on labor. And then when you take, uh, uh, and you, you can use those components in order to calculate uh, the wedge, uh, which is going to be one minus T. And then there is something that is called tau here, uh, that is basically the log of one minus T. Here it is. Okay, and actually, and, and no, and the, so tau is de defined as minus log one minus T, and it's always a positive number uh, since uh, the tax, uh, since the wedge is a number B that is uh, strictly bounded between uh, zero between zero and one. Okay, now we come to the uh, 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 you know to the objective function of each union. This is borrowed from uh, Alezina and Perotti. Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the so this is the objective function. Uh, B uh, is the uh, unemployment benefit in real terms. Uh, w i minus P is basically the nominal wage minus the price. It's it's the, it's the real wage, but in logarithmic, in logarithmic forms. And uh, uh, UI is the rate of unemployment among the members of union I. So basically what we have here is basically the expected value of, uh, uh, you know, we assume basically here that welfare of a representative uh, union member uh, is, uh, uh, depends on, uh, uh, on, the, on the income that uh, uh, the union member uh, obtains. Uh, and uh, uh, his income is going to depend on whether he's unemployment, in w when whether he's unemployed, in which case he's going to, he's going to obtain B, uh, or uh, on whether uh, he's employed, in which case he's going to get uh, the real wage WI minus P. And then the probability that uh, a, a given union member is going to be among the unemployed or the employed is going to depend on the rate of unemployment among union members, which uh, itself is going to depend, obviously, on the policy of the union with respect to setting the nominal wage, but not only on the policy of the union, it's going to depend also on what is going to be the response of the monetary authority. It's going to depend on the general price level, which in turn depends on the decentralized decisions uh, of each firm, what prices to set, and uh, uh, etc. You know, so all those things have to be taken into consideration. But in any the assumption is that the union management is actually, so this is basically the expected, if you like, the expected, expected income of a representative union member in Union I, uh, and uh, it is assumed that the union management is, uh, is setting the, when it is setting the nominal wage, is setting it in a way that is designed to actually maximize uh, this expression. Okay, so now, uh, so uh, let me recapitulate. Uh, we basically have uh, Three stages. Stage number one, nominal wages are set. Stage number, stage number two, the monetary authority uh, chooses uh, the interest rate. Uh, and stage number three, uh, given uh, those choices that have been made previously, uh, the, uh, um, each one of the monopolistic competitive firms chooses its profit maximizing price. So uh, we're going to solve that as usually going backward to have it, uh, uh, you know, uh, dynamically consistent. And uh, so equation number seven is the profit function of the uh, uh, of a representative firm. And uh, 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 here, uh, uh, you know, this term, I should measure, note this term over here. Basically, this term over here is LIJ. This is the uh, demand for labor. This is the derived demand for labor of a firm, given that uh, it has to supply this, dem this demand, which is the case in, you know, when uh, uh, there is monopolistic competition. And uh, when uh, one solves and takes logarithms of the first order condition, one gets uh, equation number eight. And uh, what, uh, le let, me, let me just uh, uh, interpret what this, uh, what this relation actually says. Uh, what it says is that uh, the relative price 
that is set by f firm j, this term over here, pij minus p is equal to a bunch of coefficients uh, multiplied by basically a, a weighted average between the gross real wage, wi is the net real, the log of the net real wage plus a factor that has to do with the wage minus uh, the price level, and here we have basically real money balances. So this term here is capturing the effect of, uh, uh, the, effect of the nominal wage set by the union and the, uh, the, uh, and the fiscal policy that is uh, chosen by the fiscal authority uh, on the relative price that uh, is de determined by the firm. And uh, 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 this term over here uh, the, uh, uh, you know, reflects, the, reflects the general level of demand that is affected both by uh, uh, the monetary policy of the monetary authority uh, as well as by uh, what uh, endogenously is going to be the general price level. And, uh, uh, okay, then we can find what the derived demand for labor here is, and there are two forms of the derived demand for labor, which also depend on similar kind of terms. I will not elaborate, there is no time. Uh, so now we go, so the, this is, this is uh, and this is true for each firm, and then we go one step backward uh, to the choice of policy by the, uh, uh, by the central bank. So then you have to take into consideration you have to plug in uh, the reaction functions of each one of those firms with respect to the price and find out what are the implications for the rate of unemployment and for the rate of inflation and so on. You know, there is a lot of calculations here. Uh, so I'll skip all those calculations. But in any case, this is the logic of what goes on. And, uh, if, uh, and then you plug that back in into the loss function of uh, uh, the central bank. And then you find and, and, yeah, and we assume that the choice variable of the central bank is the interest rate in line with the, uh, the way that, uh, you know, central banks are currently conducting monetary policy, that the instrument is the nominal rate of, is, is the nominal rate of interest, I is the nominal rate of interest, and basically equation 21 uh, it basically reflects, uh, uh, is the reaction function of the central bank uh, that uh, has been derived through this procedure well, this reaction says that except for this constant we'll, that we can forget about, there is a bunch of coefficients here, uh, and uh, 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 the, 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 all this coefficient here that stands in front, uh, W plus tau is the gross real wage. And this is a positive coefficient here. So the, what uh, this says is that whenever, uh, whenever uh, there is an increase in the gross real wage, and the gross nominal wage, uh, then uh, uh, the nominal interest rate that is going to be chosen by the central bank is going to be higher. Okay, so uh, the, uh, uh, and this is basically uh, because of the, uh, uh, it reflects, it reflects the uh, aversion uh, of the central bank to the inflationary consequences of the increase in uh, uh, inflation, the, the increase in inflation that uh, is due to either the increase in the nominal wage by the union or to a higher tax rate uh, 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 of the um, uh, uh, that is set by the fiscal by the fiscal authority. Okay, then there is the choice of wages by unions, and uh, so we have to then uh, you know find out what are the implications of uh, uh, the, the last two steps uh, for uh, the variables that the unions care about. Uh, in particular, they care about the rate of unemployment among their members, so you have to, to, to express the rate of unemployment among their members as a function of all those other variables of the, you know, and in particular of the nominal wage that is chosen by the union. And when you do all that, and uh, you, spe you specialize to a symmetric equilibrium, actually it can be shown that given that we assume that all the parameters are the same across all unions, that the only equilibrium that is going to exist here uh, 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 for wages is going to be a symmetric equilibrium. In any case, the symmetric equilibrium is, is characterized by equation 25, which gives the, which gives the W minus P, which is the after-tax nominal wage. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the, uh, it's uh, going to be more convenient to look at the uh, uh, gross of tax nominal wage, which is equation 28, and I would like to focus on that. Uh, over here, and basically what you can see here, the, uh, you can see that the, the gross of tax, uh, which is called W, uh, you know, the gross of tax is W plus tau minus P, which is the log of the gross real wage, uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, this function, and where Z, ZW and ZU 
are the overall elasticities, well, this is something I should have mentioned, because otherwise you won't understand what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, the, the uh, okay, Z, ZW, look at this term over here, is defined by all this bunch of parameters. This is the overall response elasticity uh, of, uh, uh, that is, it, it actually answers the following kind of, uh, five minutes, okay. Uh, I'm in bad shape, I don't know what to do. Uh, I will, uh, uh, okay, uh, I, <laughs> hard decision. Uh, okay, ZW is the overall response elasticity of the real wage of the union uh, to, any, to a one unit increase in, in its nominal wage. And when I say overall, it means that it takes into consideration the, the response both of the monetary authority down the road as well as of uh, uh, the firms down the road and as well as the changes in the general price level that are due to its own actions. Uh, similarly, in a similar logic, ZU, which is here, is the overall response of the rate of unemployment among union members uh, uh, to a one unit increase in, in, in its nominal wage, taking into consideration all those other factors that I mentioned in the previous case. So, you know, I don't have time to, uh, you know, to go through uh, the details. Let me uh, tell you what are some of the main results. Okay, this is what I'll use the remaining four minutes or so. Okay, so there is something that we call the participation constraint, which essentially says that, uh, uh, you know, that the net of tax real wage is such that uh, it's higher than the unemployment benefits. Otherwise, you know, people will not work. So we assume that uh, the participation constraint is uh, satisfied. In that case, the gross real wage, this position one, the gross real wage is decreasing in central bank conservativeness I. In other words, central bank conservativeness, and this is one of the novelties of this paper, that it actually, that in addition to the elements that, uh, I, you know, that I discussed uh, uh, of previous literature, it turns out that the gross real wage, which is directly related to competitiveness, is affected, among other things, not only uh, by uh, uh, the degree of centralization of wage bargaining and by uh, uh, taxes, that is fiscal policy, but it's also affected by the, by the level of central bank conservativeness. And other, in the long run, because there is no, you're not talking about the short run here. Uh, and furthermore, the gross real wage is decreasing in centralization of wage bargaining. This is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, within this framework, yeah, yeah, there are, you know, results like that already have appeared you know, in the literature previously. Proposition uh, number uh, two, uh, okay, position number two. Provided the participation constraint is satisfied, unemployment and inflation are decreasing in central bank conservativeness I and in centralization of wage bargaining uh, one over N. Okay, so basically, uh, uh, again, uh, you know, and this is related to the fact that both unemployment and inflation in equilibrium uh, in this setup are going to be directly related to the gross real wage rate because of the response of uh, uh, the various uh, endogenous actors in, uh, in this framework. <clears throat> uh, proposition number three, uh, okay, now there are two elasticities here. Uh, the elasticity sigma t uh, is, uh, 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 is the uh, response of the equilibrium gross real wage rate uh, to uh, uh, a change in the tax wage. And the elasticity sigma b is the response of the same variable uh, to unemployment benefits. And uh, those elasticities are larger when centralization of wage bargaining is higher and uh, when central bank conservativeness is higher. Uh, so that means that uh, although, let's focus only on central bank conservativeness. That means that although central bank conservativeness uh, uh, overall uh, pulls uh, the gross real wage rate downward uh, at the margin when the fiscal authority increases uh, uh, the tax rate and therefore the tax wedge then uh, uh, central banks that are more conservative that, that is obviously 
let me uh, st state one sentence before that. Obviously, when the, when the fiscal authority increases the tax wedge, uh, then uh, uh, this uh, causes an increase in uh, the gross real wage rate. This increase in the gross real wage rate, according to Proposition 3, uh, is higher, is stronger, uh, when central bank conservativeness uh, is higher. So in terms of the marginal impact of a tax rate on the gross real wage rate, central bank conservativeness is actually detrimental if you increase the tax rate. But if you decrease the tax rate, then obviously it's better to have a more uh, conservative central bank. So, you know, you can think about the implications of that for you on your own. Finally, and this is going to take two minutes, uh, we have an entire section uh, later on, which I will obviously not have the time to discuss, but I just want to uh, flesh out its existence, about endogenous fiscal policy. And how do we uh, uh, introduce endogenous fiscal policy into this framework? We do it in the following manner. We assume that uh, fiscal policy is actually a leader with respect to all the other participants. So prior to this sequence of three stages, this three-stage game, uh, we, we add a, a, a preceding stage in which the fiscal authority actually decides uh, what is going to be the tax on labor, that is therefore the tax, the tax wedge, and the unemployment benefits, uh, and uh, its objective function, which is given here in equation 35, is basically a combination of political economy considerations, that is things that have to do with uh, redistribution and uh, with welfare as measured by unemployment and inflation, so it's a combination of the two, okay? So this, uh, uh, you know, theta is actually, uh, you know, uh, welfare as approximated by, uh, or loss as approximated by unemployment and inflation, and here there is a, a politically motivated uh, queue uh, which, uh, you know, allows the redistribution through taxes. And uh, uh, so, and uh, here, uh, the main result, and uh, with that I will finish, uh, uh, pro, uh, basically, proposition number four, the tax wedge tau that is chosen by government uh, 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 is obviously increasing in the government's bias towards redistributive policies, which is called phi here, and uh, 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 it's going to be uh, decreasing in the degree of, uh, of centralization of wage bargaining, or uh, let me put it differently, it's going to be increasing in the centralization of wage bargaining and also in uh, uh, central bank independence uh, if, the, if the size of government is not too large. And actually, when you plug in realistic uh, values of the variables, you find that this is the case that is most likely to, uh, you know, to hold in reality. And uh, uh, so, in other words, uh, in terms of the incentives that central bank independence uh, uh, gives to the fiscal authority to increase taxes and to increase unemployment benefits, central bank independence actually gives uh, uh, incentives to actually uh, increase uh, the size of government. Okay, I'm, I, I'll finish with that.